What is going on, ladies and gentlemen? It's your boy, the one and only Almighty oh, Anon, <laughs> joined today by my two very infamous co-hosts. Say what's up to the graceful rogue. What's up, everyone? Stepping out of the shadows here with Almighty Anon and... Zeno! Oh, hell no. Restart the <laughs> What are you, a party character? Zeno! I don't know. I mean, I, I guess know. it kind of fits with this video. I guess you want to be... Yeah, 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 yeah. I'll be... I forgot their names. Well, you'll just be Zeno! Oh. <laughs> like, yeah. be... Surely I got trapped in a dildo. You have figured what? out the what? topic <laughs> of the video that you've clicked on. I'm on today's right. episode of What FM, we are bringing myself. you a... Immediately after viewing, with the exception of about an hour, because we're an idiot... We're a group of idiots. A review of the movie uh, Five Nights at Freddy's. There was no subtitle, right? It was just called Five, Five Nights, Nights at Freddy's. Freddy's. No, it was Five Nights at Freddy's, like the chewing. <laughs> this what? <song. laughs> <laughs> I wish y'all could have seen this. No, what's the name actually? I was it's, okay. it's, it's Five Nights it, at it Freddy's. Five Nights no, at Freddy's. I, it's not. Yes, it is. No. What do you mean, no? <laughs> it's called Five Nights at Freddy's hashtag film. <laughs> We're about to lose a co host. <laughs> We're about what to ink was about to become what what, all right? Like, <laughs> we're about to lose a what in there. Anyway, so we just went and watched it. It was a flyby movie, uh, honestly. It did not feel like two hours or hour 45, whatever it was. It's like that two-hour mark. So. It, it's somewhere around there. Are we doing spoilers? Yeah, so oh, yeah. full disclaimer, this is a spoiler review. We're not going to be talking about this as if we don't know what happened, because obviously we very fucking well know what happened. We do? I was asleep. I would hope so. <laughs> Am I the only one that sat here and watched this movie? I'm glad I wasn't the one to buy this. Let's not get into what you said at the movie. Did you hear it? Anyway, moving forward. <laughs> <laughs> It was led by uh, Josh Hutcherson, who some of you may know from Journey to the Center of the Earth series, or you may know him more, prop, more uh, probably from PETA. Uh, Hunger Games. Yeah, yeah that's what I know. Peter Malark. Joined by a couple uh, bigger stars. Uh, One he didn't know, Corey yeah. Kenshin. If anybody wants to flame the fuck out of him for that, yeah, tell him. Kind of okay, yeah. so I'm kind of mixed. You kind of look like Corey Kenshin. Like, Loki with the whole beard, you Loki look like him. <laughs> you, he you saved it. He saved it. It almost sounded bad. It, it was about to it. sound real bad. You just saved it. Like, <laughs> oh, he's black. That's shit. Yeah. Oh my god. Yeah, let me. Yeah, let's get into it. So this is a quick, like, side little thing. The only reason I got familiar with Corey Kenshin because my siblings were watching him one day, and I was like, "Who the hell are you watching?" He was like playing Injustice too, right? He's goaded. Yeah, he no, he's goaded. He's, he's actually goated. like really entertaining. Yeah. So he's just another all round gaming YouTuber. He's basically like, yeah. like Markiplier if he. Oh, no, Don't say Mark Laffy was black. Come on, like, be better. Be better, bro. Come I was going to say if you got burned. Oh my god. I'm just kidding. This is your... I'm kidding. This is... Like, hey, hey, hey. I'm anyway, Ed, who wants to talk about our other surprise star in the movie? LeBron James. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah. Matt Pat. Matt Pat made a very brief but very like whole theater he, he, oh, game theory appearance. dude. Yes. Yes. Oh, that's what we watched, right? To yes. Okay. I don't know who that was. I, I never saw his face. We See, just watched. So the videos. I feel like that's a little worse because Corny, uh, Corny, Corey Kenshin is one thing, right? But not knowing Matt Pat like that, you kind of own some shaky one. Well, we watched game theory and listened to it, but, but like, how do you not like have him memorized? Like. I didn't know his fucking we didn't watch face. All of it. Yeah. yeah so in the that. earlier episodes, Matt Pat didn't really put his face up like he does nowadays. Mm -hmm. Okay, fair enough. So okay. I, mean, I watched I, the I origin stories of, of. Yeah, FNAF. we watched like the first two games. Okay. Of uh, games are super long. And then, yeah. So I was the goal. If he kept coming around as much as he used to, yeah, was to get through that. all of Mark Blyer's playthroughs and all the game theory. Well, you left Walmart. Movie. And you still don't slide. Yeah. No, he got. You be busy sleeping. Like you literally not doing anything right now. You could visit at any point. I have an excuse, and even then, sometimes I make it it's a weak ass excuse. But I still show up more than you probably expected me to. Do. I'll give you that. Thanks. I'll give you that. <laughs> We're getting off track topic. Let's be pulling. Uh, up. She's shown some love for once. All in all, if we want to just do a quick rating run through, I would give it like a solid eight and a half. I agree with that. I give it like a yeah. Three point five. 3.5? 3. 3. <laughs> well, I thought you were measuring dick sizes. Oh <laughs> the I, movie was great, though. I thought it was very soft. I was surprised at how well the animatronics looked. Because, like, usually... For real? Like, I was expecting them to look kind of corny. Yeah, they can, look actually pretty I, well. Dude, I was expecting the CGI to be ass. Yeah. Not I'm not going to lie. I kind of wish there was a little more deterioration. Like, they made the animatronics look really good. Mm -hmm. um, it's kind of hard to tell exactly when the movie is set. But... It feels... Yeah, they they, they make it feel like it was a long time ago. 
Because they talk about it as the 80s, as if the 80s was at least over a decade. And if that's the case, the animatronics look good if the store was closed for a year or two yeah. or three even. But for it to be that far gone, they, they should have been a little more like grungy, a little they more like, hey, we, we get cleaned every night, bro. Right. Like, 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 <laughs> um, no, I, I kind of wish it was like... Uh, like, you know some of the scenes where, like, they were, like, getting attacked? Mm -hmm. And it just, like, you see them about to get attacked and it just cuts? Mm -hmm. it, they should have made it rated R. I want to see the whole body getting ripped apart in that fucking suit. I think well, they wanted to do it, but they couldn't probably go too crazy, maybe. I, maybe they didn't want to go. I want it to be more gory. Yeah. Honestly, I think... I think... How do I put this? I believe that the reason they didn't was to kind of keep it true to the games. How we never really saw what happened. It was implied. Yeah, it's never yeah. in your face. It's implied. Well, like, our audience is mostly kids. So, I mean, kids are going to watch this. Well, show. now at this but point, it's not made for kids. Yeah, just like GTA isn't made for kids. They but knew what they were doing because at this point, most people that are like kind of in that wave are like older now. Like, yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean this, uh, the first game came out. I was in seventh, was, seventh like or eighth grade. Damn. Was it like twenty ten? Oh, it was a few years later than that. Dude, I was like five years old. Twelve, two thousand thirteen. Holy shit! I'm young. Oh, um, I was five years old. When did it come out? Five nights ago. I want to say it was like 2012, 2013. Okay, 2012 sounds about that right. Yeah, it was a good year. It was either in seventh or eighth grade at the time. And the only reason I found out anything about the series was because in in the neighborhood I lived in, there was literally two other kids, and they were siblings. One was older, one was younger. So they would walk with me to the bus stop, and the one, the older one, was the girl, and she was just obsessed with FNAF, just off the one game. So I was. That's how I first heard about it and got into it and everything. I was an iPad kid. Okay. I could I could see that. I <laughs> you kind of got the look. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's like I like even now like I I I'm still be an iPad kid. Like I fucking as soon as I'm eating something, I can't eat just like sitting. I have to be watching a video, eating food. I think that's a lot of us. I I do that. Yeah, I, can't, I can't like, really like. I have to watch something. Yeah, I have to watch yeah. something. Like I fucking I will find a video before my. I mean, my food I, I kind of be one of those people like eating just like sitting on a park bench and just watching people. I mean, because technically used to watch something like it's not. It's not that, that's just creepy. <laughs> that's some Afton shit right there. <laughs> what the fuck? I want to multitask one day. Like that's what my do you that's mean my dream. This? I want to have like a fucking like a, a camera holder. Or like a like a phone holder, put it up to the wall, and I could fucking so I could watch porn, beat my dick, and eat at the same time. So it's like I'm an iPad kid with See, this eating, is why, but then I, I could also get it off. Anyway, <laughs> when I have discussions with you, I really like just continue, just go. Let Let's start by talking about the acting. Let's get into the nitty gritty of how we felt the prevalent characters. Those being, you know, uh, Vanessa the police officer, Josh mm. Hutcherson's. Mm. Um, mm. You damn right. Mike Schmidt. You damn fucking right. <laughs> Hell yeah! Sorry. We're, sorry. <laughs> you know what you reminded me of? What's that? Uh, the police officer from Zootopia. What? That Judy bad. Hopps. Yeah, but she was bad. As oh, soon as not I you two. God. Not the rabbit. Oh. No. Yes, the you, rabbit. You and Duke would. Yes, the rabbit. <laughs> and even going as far as to talk about the acting of the child actors, the spirits, Abby, and all that. How do we feel everybody did performance wise? I thought it was pretty solid. I mean, from watching all the game theory shit and like the, I mean, I get when you're doing the mini games, like they showed the mini games like in real life. Hmm. You know what I mean? Because that's what kind of the scene. Because they showed a mini game of him getting struck by the fucking. Yeah. That was it. Well, I mean, it was the end of a mini game, but it's more notably just a scene that happened. Right. But now they do it live three, action. Right? It was really yeah, good think, though. Yeah. They did do really good. They they were super accurate, but they missed two big details to me. There wasn't the rain. You know, seeping yeah. into the building, they didn't make the building as decrepit as... I mean, on, on screen, they didn't make it as decrepit as the game did in that yeah. point. Because in the original scene, it was like there was rain coming down, and that's part of how he got all spring lock shot because they're the, water sensitive as well. I kind of wanted the doors, like the metal doors. Like yeah. You push the button, yeah. Like I, I kind of missed that. It so. would have been nice. Yeah. Um, and then also, the fact that they didn't do the eyes. Right. So, I mean, they had him do the whole... I always come back. And then he put the mask on and the eyes came on. And it was like, yeah, that's cool. But it would have made more sense thematically and true to source for him to have put the mask on and just been like, I always come back. And then the eyes fade out. Yeah. That would have made the most sense to me. I would have been saying that. I would say Josh Hutcherson did a phenomenal job as a lead role. Yeah. Uh, between the dream sequences and even just like when he's looking around, he's not really saying anything. He's just looking around the place. He, he's one of those actors where he, he he could do a lot without doing anything, like just movement wise. And that's a hard thing. To yeah, make. that is a hard thing. Has like, he ever had a lead role? 
Because he was he was I mean, second he was, to Katniss or yeah. whoever the play. He dad. was supporting in Hunger Games. He yeah. was supporting. And was he supporting in Journey to the Center? Yeah, because Dwayne the Rock Johnson was in the second one, and, um, and the first one was the I don't what's know, his the, name? A super recognizable actor from the first one, but very forgettable name. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if Josh Hutcherson. He probably has. I mean, there's a lot of big actors who have a ton of movies that just nobody remembers the names yeah of but this is like probably his first big movie that a hell of people are going to talk about it depends we still don't know how the movie's going to go over this is launch day after all mm. well, I, guess it's I mean i think it will be popular but i don't think it's going to branch too too far out of the fan base or i could be completely wrong might be getting ahead of myself here you, you guys think they're going to try to do like sequels or like sequels trilogies anything like that i'm so, glad i don't want them to milk it i I'm very glad you brought that up because I think that it has huge potential for it, so especially the, with the end. Was the contents of the f- the f- movie just from the first game? I think it was a mixture. It, it was just a lore mix. Yeah. Because you got to keep in mind the games jump around. Like the first game is set after the second game, and mm-hmm. the third game is way after, like even the fourth game. Mm. So it, it's all over the place. We I don't think we know when um, security breach is in comparison to sister location and whatnot. Yeah. The, the Pizzeria for- Sim is supposedly even after or before the third game, but after everything else, so it, it's hard to tell. Wait, I don't know if I'm if I'm stupid or not, but well, was William like- Afton the guy that got him the job? Yeah, yeah. Okay, is it like that in the games where the the guy that's talking to you with the, the the clips? That was the old the old theory was that phone guy was William Afton that got killed forever ago because it just turned out phone guy was just your previous security guard or but now security it's, tapes or whatever yeah. but now it's actually William Afton and, and this lore and, and this, and this and one this so one thing and I guess so you, we didn't get that far in the theory so you don't know you might have heard this by this point all of the forms of media for Five Nights exist in separate um, separate timelines they're they're completely different universes but they're the same lore set mm-hmm. they're the true emphasis of canon but not continuity yeah so each one is its own continuity. The books have their own continuities. There's like four continuities now, right? Because yeah. there's the Silver Eyes series. There's fucking the first set of books, the second set of books. Um, then there's the games, which all exist in their own continuity or yeah. possibly multiple. And now there's a movie and with potentially more to come. Yeah. So um, they all add something <clears throat> which adjusts the overall lore. But they So like they all stay true to the fact that the spirits technically take over the animatronics, but the books clarify that it's because of this thing called Remnant, which is the metal that absorbs the spirit and kind of turns it into this More angry energy. energy. But in the movie, they talk <clears throat> about the bodies are still in there. Yes. Yeah. Even after all that time, though? Hmm. Oh, like they kind of like merged with it in a sense. Like, it's like... So if they made a second movie, what do they think the plot would be? Would so, it still be the same actors? Or? That's what I wanted to get into, because I'm glad you brought it up, and I'm glad you continued it. I seriously think that Vanessa is still going to become Vanny if there is another movie, mm-hmm. especially with her being hospitalized. I think she's just going to go fucking psychotic. Oh, I can She's going to wake up, and she's not going to remember very much. Her mind's going to be all skewered. And I think there's part of the way that Afton was talking to her during that final sequence, I think there was a period in time where she helped him. And she just got out of it and saved herself. I think she's going to revert to that time where she helped him. She's going to go back to the pizzeria, see him all fucked up, see all the animatronics. Animatronics won't attack her because they loved her. Mm -hmm. They made that clear near the beginning. But she's going to help Afton, which they're going to get convoluted again and confused. And then they'll start helping because she's helping. But they only loved her because of the picture on the wall. She was nice. No, they only loved him because of the picture on the wall. wall. She wasn't in that picture. (coughs) So... Um, <clears throat> strong acting. Vanessa, hot. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Mm-hmm. She was. She could have been a contender for an alternate for Margot Robbie for Barbie. I would say. Yeah. I would say she would have fit that role. Mm-hmm. She can arrest me anytime. I'm not. <laughs> I'm not gonna go against it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. Just. Cuff she me could. Me. She could put me in a stuffed animal. Uh, I would say the CGI was. <laughs> <laughs> the CGI was really good. Um, there wasn't any times where I was looking at it and I was like, this kind of looks. Really out of place. Even the cupcake. Even the, yeah, that cupcake was, was solid. Yeah. I mean, I think... I wouldn't be surprised if you told me they built all of those set pieces and then they, like, fucking did... Uh, what's that called? Uh, stop motion animated it and then just fix it yeah, up with CGI. It up. Yeah, I could 100% see that. see that. Especially with how long... How long have they been working on this movie? That I don't know. Mm. I assume we could... I feel like we've been hearing about it for a long time. Like, since COVID, right? 
Well, in the fucking very first couple of fucking videos, after like FNAF three with Markiplier, who's talking about a movie, and that was what 2018, 2019. Oh, maybe Ooh, that w it would have been earlier than that. Because keep in mind, we got FNAF World, Freddy Goes to Space, FNAF, and then yeah, well, uh, it might have been like 2016, 16 or 17. Yeah, I could see that. But then if they've been talking about a movie since then. I mean, I mean, they've been talking about it, but how long have they been working on it? Right. That is that is That's, a good question. Yeah. Like the freaking, I don't like. Talking we can look it up. To be honest, yeah, go ahead. Um, what did you do? You believe the movie had any crucial pitfalls, though? <clears throat> Not really. Ten years. Ten years. Damn. Ten years. Damn. In hindsight, it probably for the best that it's taken ten years for the franchise to finally achieve live-action film status. Oh, but that doesn't say if how long they were actually working on it. They started making it in February of 2023. You're fucking lying. That no. doesn't make sense. There's no way. No. Filming became in February 2023 with Emma Tammy directing and Jim Henson's great shot building. The no way. In, in Jim Crash. Henson? No fucking shot. Nope. Holy February shit. So they started making this year. Like, not even. Damn. Damn. That's we might have a movie in a fucking couple months, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Shit. <laughs> Fuck. That, I, that was a lot better than I expected it to be. No, for now, real. I'm kind of curious if Matthew Lillard was a genuine, like, choice pick for Afton, or if it was kind of just a fan service -y thing. Obviously, Matt Pat and Ke what was his name, Corey, Corey Kenshin. Kenshin. They're just like little. They, they, those were just you know for the fans, <laughs> yeah. and they they did their role and they came in, they came out. They, it wasn't overdrawn. It didn't take away from the movie. It was good. They I I liked their appearances. Um, but Broken. Matthew Lillard, that that one I was kind of back and forth on. He did great. He looked great. But was it really? Was it an artistic choice or was it a fan servicey thing? Because people love Matthew Lillard for. A number of reasons, you know, horror, fucking shaggy, everything. So, I'm kind of curious. Maybe, it's, about a, maybe it's a mix of both. You think? Yeah. It's like, hey, this guy fits for this, and people love him. Mm. Pick him. Like, there's another role he did <clears throat> that I know, and it sticks in my head, and I cannot seem to get it for some reason. It, it'll bother <clears throat> the shit out of me, but we'll look it up later or something. Um, as far as pitfalls go, it was kind of the B plot of the whole like shaggy. What? Are He's you not. serious? Oh my God. <laughs> Who'd you say? Shaggy. That was the only one I could remember. Oh. <laughs> Sorry, guys. He's late to the party sometimes. Um, Scream? <clears throat> the B-plot with... <clears throat> he was in Scream. I never watched it. So Without a paddle? You never watched Scream? I don't do horror. This is like a first We're having me. a movie night. Nope. I'm good. No. Anyway, <laughs> the B-plot with the whole child court thing. You know, I mean, I, I didn't mind the whole the daycare scenes and mm -hmm. whatnot. That was okay. It was a little confusing because why does he have a daycare when he had a babysitter? But whatever. Because it seemed like the daycare was pre-established as is. Yeah. So uh, kind of confusing. But um, it, it kind of amounted to nothing. Like, it's like that that character. What was it? Their aunt or whatever? Yeah. The, yeah. Their, their auntie was there purely so that she could be there when... The babysitter died to watch her the one night and then just died. I feel like it is kind of pointless in a sense, but it was also, they're really more so just there to help set up. So, like, her getting the people in there to give more scenes like the animatronics and, like, send those people in there to break into the building. Yeah. Th that was pretty much it. But when you think about it, it's like... It could have been any. Anybody. They could have just switched out the whole babysitter thing with fucking... Just random crooks. Yeah. I mean, I kind of want to see what happens, though. Like, okay, so... I mean, so the three people that were set up on the mission by his, what, niece? Mm -hmm. his, got killed. His auntie. Auntie, yeah. Got killed, right? Yep. His auntie got killed. Mm -hmm. Do you think in, like, the second movie that they're going to, like, arrest him for, like, the murders of them people? Because it's kind of, it, they kind of can't prove that it was fucking animatronics, right? Yeah, they kind of just glossed they, over yeah, that. Yeah. They, they didn't but really, all the like, bodies there was, are there. Like no, that, besides yeah. one. Because the ant's body still is in the fucking living room floor living room. watching yeah, TV. Yeah, they did skip that part. I'll give you that. So, I mean... It's like the other ones, I... Yeah, that's kind of odd. Speaking of the sequel, do you think it's going to go back to the Josh Hutcherson story, or do you think they're going to hold that off for now and do one about Fitz? You might hold I don't know if you remember. The first game, the paycheck at the end was Mike Schmidt. That's the only reason we even know who we were playing in that mm -hmm. game. 
The second game, it was Fitz something. I forgot his last name. I, I don't remember, but it, it you know, I remember his name was Fitz, because it reminds me of the YouTuber. Now, if the movie blows up, you know who they have in that role? Hmm. Leonardo DiCaprio. <laughs> that actually, I mean, hey, don't diss my boy Leo. He no, can act. But do you, I know he can act, but do you see him in a role like that? Yeah, he, Animal Chomps coming up. What the fuck is going on? Yeah, he, <laughs> Titanic scene But at pops that point, up. I feel like, I don't know, I feel like with certain actors, it can either become like this actor's great for the role or this actor is the movie, not the movie itself. No, I feel like in the second movie, the guy, the, the, the Peter, the, what, what is his name? Mike Schmidt? Right? Is that who he played? Yeah. He gets locked away in jail, right? So now they have to hire someone else. Because they still have no information. No, right? the people who the person who hired him was Afton. Yeah, he's gone. Yeah. Oh, well who's then they have on? a new hire person. Who's I don't, they're not gonna hire Vanessa. Him. She hires people. She's in the hospital. I think she, we got foreshadowing. All right, let's before before we del delve into trying to unravel what you got going on, you know, um, like a Christmas present. There was I, in October when they cut back like to Freddy's and we saw Afton twitching and the child spirit and everything. I don't know if you guys saw, but in the transition from the scene that it was in, because I can't remember, I think it was like Josh Hutchison and what's her name at home mm -hmm. right before that. And it was fading into that. The first thing that faded in that I saw was the coming soon sign. Obviously that was from that restaurant, right. but I think it was foreshadowing saying that they were going to talk about opening another location. Which could lead into the whole Fitz thing. They could have a location that's actually open and active, and Fitz dealing with the kidnappings happening again. Okay. Do you think his sister could become the one, the marionette? Yeah. That's what I thought she was symbolic of in this movie, with yeah. the way she interacted well, with to, the others. I mean, they, they tried, get, to, put they, they, they they tried, tried to, to put her in it. Yeah. They tried to put her in Baby. That's what threw me off is Baby is supposed to be a whole separate character from a whole separate restaurant set after all the uh, Freddy Fazbear locations. Um, but that that was a very clear baby suit, just without a body. It was an it was a, the endoskeleton with just a big-ass baby head just to show you who she was trying to get stuffed into. Kind of making uh, Mike Schmidt into a sort of Henry... Uh, what's his name? Henry Emily character. Because Henry was, in the lore, the other creator of the Fazbear industry. Yeah. Well, who'd you play as in <clears throat> Sister Location? You played as... Up for debate. Up for debate. <laughs> some people believe it's William Afton. Some people believe it's it Henry Emily. It was it's hard to tell because you're, you know, you want to say William Afton because you go to the uh, Five Nights Four house every night after the fact, which is right over Sister Location. But also, William Afton might technically be a spring trap at that point in time in a whole separate part, and it might be Henry Emily. We know it has to be one of those two or one of their descendants because of how the animatronics interacted with them in Sister Location. They treated them as if they were okay until they got close and they were like, wait, something's not right. Five Nights at Freddy's will go deep. It, it's, it's hard to unravel, and we don't want to make the whole podcast a Five Nights lore thing. We're trying to stick... Relatively to oh, the yeah, movie. Oh, yeah, to the movie. We watched it. <laughs> hey, we watched the movie, by the way. Yeah, that's right. I keep having to fucking lasso, like, hey, get back here, hey. <laughs> um, child actors. All of them did surprisingly really yeah. well. And to find out that this movie was made on that short of a time frame is... This is impressive. ...mind-blowing that they all did as well as they did. Uh, the child spirits, only one of them talked, except for the one who screamed. Yeah. <laughs> It was a yellow shirt kid. Yeah, for, for yeah. yeah. And then um, we had the brief speaking from the Garrett character, which is kind of a weird, like, C plot, but also. Relevant for, like. It was good. Yeah. It was relevant. It was a nice, kind of necessary addition, I would say. Yeah. So, if, if, they, kill, if they killed his. They killed his brother. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Who did he become? Who would he get put into? Possibly Golden Freddy. Because the first victim, as far as we know, has always been Golden Freddy. Makes sense. I but can see that. It's also weird. Did you read the books, Rogue? No, I did not read the books. Okay. In the first trilogy of books, the soda. The He's asking for his soda. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> 
in the first trilogy of books, um, you were focused on this character named Charlie. Okay. All right. Charlie is the daughter of Henry. Okay. In that series, they talk about Charlie having these brief memories of sitting in a closet in the original um, Fazbear Diner location before it was Fazbear Entertainment Industries and all that. Uh, and then a brief shot of like a door opening and then it all cut out. And she remembers having a sibling. Okay. This to me screamed like a super similarity between that original story with Charlie Emily and this story with uh, Mike Schmidt and Garrett. Okay. Because, I mean, you ha you're a younger, you have a sibling who gets taken away from you and you don't know what happened. Makes sense. And nobody talks about your sibling. Obviously, your parents are dead, but your auntie doesn't talk about your sibling. You and you don't talk about your sibling, so it's kind of the same error to me. As an, it's an interesting comparison. There's a lot of tie-ins that they made like adjustments for for this movie that I'm very interested to see if they do anything with. Okay, I deal with that. How do you guys feel about uh? What was I gonna say? The, so one thing. Kind of going back to your earlier question of uh, did they drop the ball on anything? I feel like they kind of dropped the ball with the babysitter. Because the babysitter felt like out of that there group. There was more to it. <clears throat> yeah. They felt like out of that group, she was the only one that was like kind of on his side. Or yeah. not even kind of like was on his side. She's like, and she was vaguely <clears throat> flirty with him yeah. too. <clears throat> I want to get married. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Must be nice. <laughs> <laughs> um, <clears throat> damn, dying. But uh, yeah, I felt like she was, when everyone else was dying in there, like when the, the group went mm -hmm. to break into Fazbear's. Yeah, she wasn't I, even in the, in the store. No, she wasn't in the store at first. And then when she does go in, I assume she was going to escape. Yeah. Right. I There's mean, it would make the chopped in half. Yeah, it just gets chopped in half. I'm like, oh, okay, well, I guess you're not relevant anymore. Because, like, you were the only one that seemed redeemable. Or, like, I mean, you didn't even really want to go against them in the first place. And they were doing it for <laughs> $2,000. Yeah, the fact we were in sync. <laughs> like, that's <laughs> Dude, <clears throat> these motherfuckers are being, like... Pushed into doing a legal activity in front of a lawyer mm -hmm. who's scared to do anything himself. They literally said we could just off him. Right. Like, they literally said, and then they're like, they're talking two thousand dollars. I'm like, wow, y'all cheap. Right. Cheap as like, fuck. Damn. Jesus. I'm gonna call. You him. can't even get a car for two thousand dollars now. Sonia. <laughs> Shut <laughs> up. <laughs> you better hope nothing happens to Sonia now. They'll have oh, you yeah, a fucking yeah. video. <laughs> got me. Goddamn. Oh my god. Got me in four K. I I think. The other big thing that I'm kind of curious about with the movie was when Freddy left. A, I don't think Freddy actually left the building to go get Abby. I don't think there was a physical thing there. I think no, was she like was just drawn to it. That, that was it. Right, but then that draws the question of why was Corey Kenshin's taxi driver character so like shocked when he looked in the rear view? He was like, Jesus, I always get the weird ones. <laughs> Furthermore. I still don't think it was, like, physically there. I think it was just an apparition. How? Then how did his aunt get killed? That is a good question. Yeah. I have no idea. Why the fuck she did he have the one aunt. glowing eye? She killed the aunt. She killed the aunt. It's possible. Marionette? Why did he have one glowing eye? Because the other one doesn't work. Golden for... <laughs> I'm, so, I'm sorry. I'm so, you got hit the taser too many times. <laughs> it wasn't even, like... The regular eyes, either. It was just like a blue fucking yeah. pulsar ball. He was looking badass, though. They did really good with that scene. Yeah. I mean, it was sick. Was and it was... Tough. I think it would have been nicer if we saw, like, the Halloween Five Nights scene. 4 Nightmare version of Freddy. It would have been know. creepy as fuck, and it would have been confusing why she would trust that thing. But I think that would have made more sense than just the kind of disgruntled well, she Freddy doesn't, she, doesn't, she doesn't... She knows who they are. So she doesn't see them as the animatronic. She sees them as little kids. That is true. She mm -hmm. did see them as the kid. But even then, it still would have made more sense for it to be at least Golden Freddy. Because Golden Freddy's the only one we've seen that has that, like, glowing, ominous, deep eyes. Uh, yeah. So I don't understand where that came from. Well, do you think they're going to... Because they, the, the people that they killed got stuffed into those things. Yeah. Yeah. Do you think, like, is there any other characters that are just going to pop out of nowhere? We didn't so, see Golden Freddy, so there's that. Let's say this then, right? If they do decide to make more, obviously, let's say... I mean, I feel like they would probably do what they usually would just... It will be another main character. But I feel like what they might do is if they make a second one, they're going to bring the first cast of uh, characters from this movie back in. 
not as the main, but like more so, oh, I've dealt with this before. Right. And then bring them in to help. Or they don't come in the second movie, but then they come in the third movie. And regardless of which movie that they interact in, I feel like that's when Mike's going to have an interaction with one of the animatronics. and be like, you're the babysitter. At least for, for that. We kid. saw that happen, though. Mike saw the babysitter. Remember because when he, he, when he, he almost her, got... see her back as, like, the animatronic, though. Like... Yeah, I, I, I can get that. Because, like, you, if you're going to stuff them into it, you might as well utilize them. Otherwise, it's just... Right. Uh, I, I could see them setting up a trilogy. Low-key. Going back to the Fitz idea, right? Second movie is about a new location opening in another town. Fitz is the security guard. He hears this weird yellow bear suit that's not used for anything, groaning the name Mike Schmidt. Mike. Mike, whatever. Fitz looks into it, finds Josh Hutcherson's Mike Schmidt, contacts him, they get together, they stop the second location, second location gets shut down, and then a third movie happens with Vanessa. Or something. Vanny. Just, I I could see something like that happening. I could see that. I could definitely see that. I think it's very safe to say, though, this will not be the only movie. No. The way they kind of ended off, it was like, they gave it a satisfying ending in the sense of, hey, if we don't make, get a chance to make another one, here's this. Well, I just don't it. want them to fucking, like, no. oh, this movie's really good. It had really good reviews. Let's make 30 movies. Fucking end yeah, up like Marvel. I don't, I don't want them to milk it. Yeah. <laughs> like Marvel, I don't want them to milk it. They kill off Iron Man and fucking... Now I feel like, like three movies is it. If you yeah. start going past that, then we have a problem. I feel well, like... Well, you see with the games, though. I mean, some of them kind of look... Yeah, but points. games are kind of different, though. Because like, that's all still... I mean, the movie kind of did it in the same way, though, as the games, where it told a story in its own right. You know, Five Nights 4 was about seeing what happened to the first bite victim. Yeah. Stuff like that. Uh, third one was all about the haunted house themed Freddy Fazbear's fucking security breach was an entirely own direct plot line but they also didn't tell a whole overarching story the movie kind of did the same thing it told its own satisfying direct story with more webs to go so I mean I, I if they did it right I, I don't care how many movies they make I just meant realistically speaking like would they get approved to make a sequel yes I think they'll do successful enough to do that Especially with how big the franchise is. It obviously couldn't have cost that much to make it if they made it in so little time. Or it cost more to make it with how little time they made it in. Yeah. I don't know. Hmm. Unless they planned it during COVID and then COVID shut it down, but finally doing it. Yeah, because it doesn't feel like they should have started that recently. No. I feel like they've been talking about this a lot longer. For a lot longer than that. Security Breach was also talked about for a while. Well, I'm glad they waited. Because at least they wanted to do it right and not push yeah. it. And just have like some fucking tr I, I, actors we've never heard of before do it. I was going to say, in terms of like that kind of era, or era with the games that were popular then for like YouTube or stuff like that, like obviously Five Nights at Freddy or Slenderman, mm -hmm. I'm glad that this one actually worked out because I was disappointed with Slenderman. Like, <laughs> that, that I never is watched it, was it bad? Oh. Slenderman, did it even get more than one mainline game? No. I don't think so. <laughs> it was literally just go around the forest, collect these notes, it's creepy, it's loud, and that's about it. You don't, you don't really know, and I know I that guess... That was like the Xbox 360, wasn't it? Yeah, it was yeah. on 360, but it was originally, it was on PC first. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It was, yeah. yeah. No, they, I, I played the game, it was pretty fun. A game that is kind of like, that was like... RPG ish that kind of like reminded me of Slenderman was you ever played the Blair Witch Project? That was based off the movie. I did play it. I didn't like it too much because I, I I didn't I wasn't fucking with it at first. So no, I was, I it, it was a terrible game. Yeah, the movie was good. The movie was good. Really, I will have to watch it. I mean, I mean, you're into scary shit. Yeah, I I don't know why I'm drawn to. Actually, I'm not even gonna finish that because you're gonna just turn it around. Never mind. Favorite scenes from the movie. Hmm. Her getting chopped in half. I really like that. I love gore. I love horror. You're a shit. fucked up person, you dude. Know I, I just like I just love action. They did do it pretty clean though. They it did. was a clean cut. Because I was I was like after seeing like like you see bro get his face getting chopped off and shit. I'm like oh okay this is gonna be like kind of like a kid <laughs> like a kid kind of kid friendly movie. They're not gonna have any blood and shit. Yeah, and then, seen shit. then you saw his like the the first bit of blood you saw was the handprint mm -hmm. sliding down the wall, and then you you go in. And then you see her get chopped in half. And you actually get to see her fucking body just on the floor just chopped in half. And then the one scene where...
he's in there looking around, and you can see them all, like, dude with his face fucked up, mm-hmm. in the suit. You can see the fucking everybody. It's gay. I thought that was cool. I kind of like the... I want to say it's my favorite scene, also, if I think about that one. I do like the scene where he's with them, with, like, Abby... And she's like, oh, these are my friends. Look at wherever I took it. And he's just looking at these things like, bro, what the fuck what is What the fuck, fuck is kid? Yeah. Like, and like, Freddie, like, after she's like, no, that's my brother. He's cool. He, like, he chills down. Dude, Freddie was ready to, like, to at any Ooh. moment. Like, you try something, bro. You dead. I want you to know this right now. He's mine. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> she is mine. It's like, a scene they cut out, like, it, like, it feels like it ended, was when, when you see the exit door and fucking Mike was pushing on the door and then Foxy comes over and. Oh, gets up, gets up, gets his ass, and then all you see is like a time skip, and then it's fucking Vanessa waking him up. I would love to see what happened in between. Yeah, that, that was a little weird. That, yeah, I won't. Because how do you survive that? Let's be honest. You know, they they don't really explain it. So yeah, I'll give you that. It felt like that there was something originally there, and they cut it because of rel- maybe time relevance or something. Yeah. I just want to know how his ki- the kids got in his dream because when he was getting injured in his dreams, he was getting injured in real life. Oh no, he was getting injured in real life. In real life, yeah. But well, they transferred to his dreams. Power of spirits, I guess. That, that would be my best guess. I mean, the way they were running around him and hitting him kind of felt alluding towards the same way that you see ghosts attack people in movies yeah. and shit. They just, like, fly through them and all of a sudden they're hurt. Like, it doesn't look like they did shit. But and then they're, they wake they're, up they're, and they're like, oh, shit, what the fuck? Right, like, yeah, it's... Speaking of scenes like that, though, one, my favorite scene was definitely when... Um, the Fred, it was Freddy's ghost, right? Was the yeah. main blonde kid? Yeah. Uh, when he was talking to him, and the kid showed him like the good dream or the like, good the life good, that he could he have, have and everything. Now nah, that kid rocked it. He rocked that shit. He was like he he gave that hey I'm a kid, but here's this menacing ass energy. If I he was a you. cute ass kid in one scene and a fucking horrifying creature in another. He's like I can give you what you want. It's like and it's there's something. I that, want your sister. <laughs> <laughs> the fact that he said yes Ooh. was crazy though. Yeah. yeah. Blindsided. He was 100% blindsided. This man is literally drugged so that he can go to sleep. He's in a peaceful spot. He's seeing what he hasn't been able to see in well over a decade. Mm-hmm. Something he's dreamed about even without knowing it. They're fucked up kids because they're antagonizing him. They're giving him what he wants. And like, oh, you want to you keep they're, having these dreams? Look, bro. You want to keep having these dreams? Desire is a fucked up drug. Give me your fucking sister, bro. That's just, that's just... Yes! <laughs> yes! Yes! Do it! And he turns around. He's like, no, don't do it. Oh! Oh, oh fuck. Oh! <laughs> But on a literary standpoint, you have to admit, it is a powerful scene. Yeah. It shows human fault. It's emotional. Josh Hutcherson kills his performance in that. It, the kid is like, the, the kid that plays Garrett is just fucking stone faced. Yeah. That's what I, I think adds to the scene, too, because it's like, there's one thing when it's like a menacing, just a person doing some shit, right? But it's another thing when it's a kid, someone you're supposed to look like in like an innocent kind of stance, and then mm-hmm. they're on this creepy ass shit. It's like mm-hmm. you're getting a whole mixed kind of fill of emotions. It's like, damn, that's a kid. Why are you talking to me so cryptic and scary? But he's a kid. I should be like, hey, man, what's up? This man kind of is freaking me out. Nah, what fucked me up was like, when he was like, he was like, he was like, what do you want? He was like, I want to find your killer. He was like, you don't want to help us. You don't want to help us. You're lying. You just want your, you just want to have your, you just want to change back time. And that's you can't, lot. bitch. <laughs> and I was like, damn, okay. <laughs> Kids speaking, speaking facts. Oh my god. I did like, for the first time, other than Security Breach, we've seen how the electronics, or not electronics, animatronics move. Mm. I think they killed that. Oh yeah. They made that look, it was just like jerky and robotic enough for it to feel like you were watching an actual animatronic. Yeah. But smooth enough that it didn't, it, it didn't jar the scene. It didn't take away from what you were seeing. Chica putting the cupcake in the vent. Insane. And, yeah. <laughs> the way they did that and then just turn and like look at the camera like like bro I, that yeah. creepy ass show like ah oh, hell no. I like how they all were slow except for Foxy. That was code. Foxy's mm-hmm. always been isn't Fo- Foxy's always Foxy been. was the only one that's ever ran. Right, right. but the fact that they, they they were they did that in the mm-hmm. movie was code. And that's making that them all run. To, that shit used to get me though when I would be watching people play it and like this one dude I remember he was it wasn't like any popular YouTuber like that. I mean maybe it's not. I don't know. Shout out to you my dude. But uh <laughs> He was, like, playing. I think he was, like, on the last night. And he was doing really good. And then, like, he was looking on the cameras. And Foxy's just booking ass. And he tried to turn Foxy's eyes. I was like, God damn. 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 Foxy be quick ass fuck. I will say one thing that they didn't do from the games that I'm perfectly okay with. It, I would have been completely jarred. Is the animatronics in the vents. The yeah. cupcake, that made sense. 
You know, I, oh I yeah, but like that, if you look in the vent, you'll just see like if five, you just saw like, fucking yeah, if you saw Freddy just like. Uh, 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 uh. <laughs> Um, I want. I personally wanted to see the music, like you, like in the first game, you get music before you get killed. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I wanted to see like every single time. Freddy. That would have been a cool ass. Like you just hear music and the dude's looking around, like, "What the fuck's going on?" Mm-hmm. Freddy coming in, the fucking right hook from Jesus has popped his ass. I think the whole theater would have shit their pants if one of the scenes was just Josh Hutcherson sitting there at the monitors and everything. Power goes out and it is a pure black screen, like somebody turned off the fucking TV. And you just see those two eyes with the music pop up. Oh, Everybody would have lost their shit. Power comes back on and he's not there. He's gone. Oh. He is gone. Oh. Oh, Freaky shit. God. I'm kind of sad that we didn't get any It's Me references from Golden Freddy. Yeah. That would have been a nice thing. Even if it was just maybe, maybe there was and we missed it. But just faintly like moans in the deep depths of the wall. Just, <laughs> it's me. It's me. Yeah. That would have been sick. It's the little things. Shut up, Trev. (laughs) Sorry. Any closing comments about the movie? I was actually surprised. So, like, it wasn't, like, on, like, a scary level, but it was, like... Because, let's be honest, most of our movies these days aren't really scary. But, well, okay, in in my case, I know you don't really watch. Now I want you to, because now I will enjoy watching... You didn't think The Exorcist was scary? No. The Exorcist was not scary. No, it wasn't scary. It was Neither was The Nun. No, the nun, the nun was the nun like doing fatalities on people. It yeah. wasn't like scary, and people were just <laughs> that just was just fucked up. Yeah, the exorcist was. was just fucked up, but it was like, but also kind of like, damn, is anything going to happen soon? It was just a lot of a lot of yeah, yeah. But in this, it was definitely one of the scary movies. It was like I wasn't really like scared, but it was an enjoyable horror movie. Like there was actually good. It was well done. The elements were nice. It was like it, a slasher. It was like Scream a yeah. little bit. It wasn't like fucking you're scared, but it's yeah. like you're seeing watch people get murked. Yeah. So, I, they definitely did a solid ass job for Finance of Freddy movie. Like, I'd be like, ah, go watch that shit. That was good. Yeah, I was not expecting. I was like, damn, Tom really been hyping this shit up. Just to bro, drag, honestly, kind of same. Out. I was like, bro, he really hyped this shit up for me to get off work, come over here, watch this movie that I know they're gonna screw up because they screw up every movie like this. Why am I here? Oh yeah, I guess I kind of fuck with these dudes, so I'll show up. <laughs> and then I, I watched the movie. I was like, damn, that was not a waste of my time. Not I actually real. enjoyed that. Like, yeah. I was scared shitless of the fight. I was like, damn. Uh, Oh. What's scared shitless of watching the movie or scared shitless what would happen if you didn't show up? No, I've loved just like fucking like damn, it's probably gonna be a fucking Terry West movie and I'm just gonna fucking I mean we can say it was a good video game movie. Yeah. Yeah. You don't really get many of those. No. No. I I'm surprised Sonic has two successful ones. I was confused. I still haven't seen either of them. Mario has a good one too. Mario was not seen Mario, but I, I haven't seen it. I heard, I heard mainly the complaints of Mario's just the voice. Like I feel like yeah. that's the like how do you Chris Pratt's him? voice is a little, yeah. a little strange, but that's who plays Star Lord in. Mm-hmm. Wow. Yes. All in all, we give it a rough eight point five all around, right? No, well, uh, no Z- according to Zeno, three point five. So I, it kind of lowers it to a five. <laughs> I, I just don't like you. Um, good movie. We had a good time. We enjoyed it. Uh, this is October twenty seventh, twenty twenty three. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Did you really have to look. Like you knew. I didn't the- know if it was past midnight yet. We started at close to eleven. I don't know how long we've been talking. 37 minutes. It's only been 37 minutes. Has it really? Yes. Well, 40 it's been 43. Shit, I, you, said 40, you said you got 45 episode. minutes. We're almost at the 45 <laughs> <laughs> we, fin- we finished exactly on time so we can hang out with fucking whatever yeah, your other bitches. Yeah. Damn. All right, well, we're guys. getting replaced. You're what egg might be dying. But it's not going to die, all right? <laughs> Thomas will always be the goat, all right? Oh, oh <laughs> I, I guess Zeno is here. We too. got the graceful hoe. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for tuning into this episode of What FM. Thank you a ton to my co-stars, Zeno and Rogue. Thank you for coming out to the movie. Thanks for coming out for the show. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe. Hit that little notification bell so you know every time I decide to upload or go live. And click on the links in the description so that you can do the same for both of their channels. And without further ado, I hope you have a wonderful night. That's Anon out. Rogue out. No, actually, before I say that, um, since he wants to be a dick, if y'all seen the movie, let us know in the comments what you thought of it. You know, say so. You know, engage with your friends, bro. Say something to him. That's all I had to say. But I'm going to go back to the shadows because I'm not used to being out this long. And uh, Zeno, you got anything you want to say to him? Hopefully he keeps going with the What FM. It's low-key. Go to podcast. You know, hopefully it doesn't fuck it up like every other uh, playlist he had. Yeah. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> but hey, if the time's coming, you got 10 days until you get one of the greatest videos. Yep. With Tom.
Thank you for reminding me. November 7th, if you're watching, if you've made it this far, November 7th at midnight, we'll be dropping the one-year look back on Almighty Anon. We've got some pretty big announcements coming and everything, and it's a pretty pretty decent vi video. Zeno helped me look back through it, quality check it and everything, and it, it was a good time. So without further ado, I hope you have a wonderful night. Anon out. Aces.